Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Tom's River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 708, 49 degrees, heading all the way up to 49 degrees today. Uh, it is uh, raining. It's windy. It's March 14th. We're here on WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio, streaming live at WOBMAM.com and on the Radio Pup app, 732-505-1160 if you want to join the conversation. And our next conversation is with the mayor of Bricktown, Mayor John Ducey. Welcome to uh, welcome to the studio. How are you this morning? Great. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Absolutely. Uh, listen, I, I was just telling you in the break, I am happy to have anyone... Uh, in the studio who understands the importance of driving commerce in a local community as a as a means by which to elevate a community as a whole. So I'm happy to have that conversation with you. Yep, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, so let's start, though, before we get into all that other stuff, I'd like to know, first, I always... I, I'm always interested to understand, especially from folks that go into politics... Where the moment is that you cracked, where it all kind of, where it all went left for you. No, in all, in all seriousness, when did you decide, you know, what is your background? When did you decide you wanted to, uh, to, to kind of serve at this level? Uh, it was actually probably about only a year or two, a year before I actually, uh, was elected. Um, it just came down to taxes just kept going up and not only going up a little bit, but going up tremendously. Uh, in fact, in 2011, our taxes in Bricktown went up 24 percent in one year, and that's actually the year that I decided to run for uh, council and was lucky enough to be elected in 2011 and started in 2012. Okay. And your background is uh, you were an attorney? Yes, I'm an attorney. Yes. Uh, and what kind of law did you practice? Um, back then, I pretty much uh, I represent doctors uh, suing auto insurance companies for their medical bills. Oh, Okay. Uh, all right, and so uh, you decided to go from uh, from a career in in uh, the law to a career in helping to uh, change the law and yes. to uh, <laughs> and to write policy. And so, uh, how have you done so far from a taxation standpoint since you've uh, been in office? We've kept taxes stable. Uh, two out of the four years so far, we had zero raises. Uh, last year, we were up to a one. We had a one point nine percent raise. I'm sorry, one point nine cent raise. Um, and uh, the, the the year before that, it was a little bit of right around two as well. So you feel like that's better than the twenty four percent that that was there before you got there? <laughs> Much better. Uh, it's uh, having that type of spike in somebody's uh, income is not easy to deal with. Uh, people were having a hard time paying their tax bills when they go up like that. If you can keep them stable, uh, keep them to a percentage that is very low. Uh, that's the way to go. And uh, if it wasn't for Sandy, our taxes would actually be lower. But unfortunately, it had a big impact on us. And so, what do you what do you attribute it to? I mean, what has really been the secret sauce? What is your what is your message? What is it that you drive to to you know? It's one thing to say uh, we have to keep taxes down. It's another thing to actually do something about it. What's the, what's the what's the What's the secret? Uh, it's a whole bunch of different things. But originally, when I first became mayor in 2014, uh, we, I did cut out a lot of mid-level management positions that were not necessary. Um, there was uh, a number of positions that there was a department head, but then for some reason there was also a deputy department head. I was able to eliminate those uh, and actually consolidate. We went from six uh, township departments down to five. Uh, and then also a big initiative was to cut overtime. And the way we did that with the police department in particular was, uh, and we had the PBA on board, they're uh, willing partners, uh, we were able to hire some special police officers uh, in order to take up some of the time. So the police officers themselves were not stuck in the, in the uh, town hall, in the police department, booking people. We now have special police officers do that. So the officers are right back on the road if it's still their shift or if it's not their shift any longer, they're no longer making the overtime, they're actually getting to be able to go home and get rested up for the next shift. So wait, so you're saying this is this is revolutionary and I want to make sure I got this straight. You're saying that by cutting waste and duplication of jobs and eliminating like overspending like overtime, you're able to save people tax dollars. 
Yeah, that's the key. That's crazy. I'm gonna write. <laughs> let me just write that down. Hold on a second. Okay. All right. Got it. All right. Cool. Uh, see, seems uh, seems uh, seems too simple, but you know, we we may talk about that on this show every now and then. Um, we may. We may mention the 600 plus school districts we have in the state um, and the uh, 600 plus superintendents we have. In the- anyway, that's a whole separate issue. All right, so uh, you have some pretty cool programs here, and um, you know, number one, I I uh, I am the chairman of the Greater Tom's River Chamber of Commerce, uh, and so uh, chambers and local business means a lot to me personally. Um, for a number of different reasons, you have uh, Michelle, who runs the, the Chamber of Commerce in Brick, does a fantastic job. But you guys, in general, have done a great job of of building commerce uh, throughout the township. So, one of your programs I know is Buy in Brick. So, so tell us a little bit about that. What is Buy in Brick? Yep, Buy in Brick is a uh, uh, a card. Um, it's a tax incentive program, and it actually helps small businesses. It's uh, you get a rewards card like you would at a ShopRite or a Rite Aid or some other store. Uh, but instead of actually getting discounts uh, on the products in that particular store, it actually gives you a discount on your third quarter taxes every year. Uh, so an example is um, uh, the River Rock Restaurant. They're part of the program. They were the first ones to join, so I use them as examples a lot. Uh, if you were to go in there and have your meal and your drinks uh, and your bill came out to $100, and I'm not saying their food's expensive. It's just that I like to use round numbers. Right. It's easier for me. And we could have had a lot to drink, Mayor, I'm just saying, <laughs> if I was there. Yeah, so go ahead. <laughs> So you have a $100 bill. Uh, it comes to your table. You ate your food. You had your drinks. You pay your $100. Uh, now what the River Rock does, the River Rock only takes 90 of that and puts it in their bank account to do what they do. Uh, but the other $10 goes into uh, paying your third quarter taxes. Um, so it's a great program. It incentivizes people to go to businesses uh, that are local. Uh, so you make a choice. Instead of going across the bridge to a different restaurant or going over to Tom's River to a different restaurant, you say to yourself, you know what, I feel like saving on my taxes today. I'm going to stay right here at home at Brick Township and uh, eat at a local restaurant or shop at a local business. Oh, and, and so how many businesses are involved there? Uh, there's almost there's, there's, there's just about 40 now, and um, they've had a very good success. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, so does it go into like a does it go into like one big pot, or it goes into the individual who it goes into the individual who bought pot, right? Yes, yeah. The town actually doesn't get anything at all. So the individual. So if if I go in there and I spend my money, I get the break on my third quarter taxes. And and so so you so the 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 township still gets its tax dollars, but this is the business is kind of paying into into the tax base. Is that how that works? Uh, the the business is paying that percentage, okay. um, but the incentive to them is they they have a lot. Oh yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. More they're getting a, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand it. Uh, oh, that's fantastic. It seems like a it seems like a no brainer. I uh, uh, and I can't. That doesn't work for me because I live in Tom's River. Okay, well, let's move along. Uh, so, how does a business join if they want to get involved? Uh, they would just contact Town Hall seven three two two six two ten fifty and ask for Keith. Okay, Keith. And and how many and how many folks have these cards right now? Uh, there is a number of uh, cards out there. I don't have the exact number. Thousands of cards are out there. Okay, yep. that's a, that's a lot of cards. Yeah. All right, uh, no <laughs> I'd worries. say close to fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand cards. Yeah. Yes. Jeez, so, do you have any idea what the finance, like what the what the dollar impact has been so far? Yeah, in the first year, uh, we started uh, in August of two thousand and fourteen. So between August of fourteen and August of fifteen, there was over seven hundred thousand dollars of transactions. And um, the highest single transaction was ten thousand dollars because there's a diverse number of businesses. Uh, there's right. there's car repair services. There's uh, roof uh, window places. Or obviously a bunch of restaurants, uh, thrift stops, thrift shops, and uh, it's brought in over seven hundred thousand to our economy, which equated into about sixty six thousand dollars worth of tax savings for our residents. Gosh, you know what? If we had that in Tom's River, the way my family eats out for dinner. We would probably get a rebate every year. That would be fantastic. God, I got to get that program. We got. I got to talk to Mayor Kelleher about that. All right. Um, when we come back, uh, Mayor John Ducey from Bricktown, I want to talk about your storefront revitalization program, Summerfest, but most importantly, I want to talk about Wegmans. We love Wegmans. Be right back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Back after this. Connect with Jeremy, 732-505-1160. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160, 1310, and WOBMAM.com. All right, we are back, Mayor John Ducey, Bricktown. So talk to us uh, about this storefront revitalization program. 
Yep, just trying to find new ways to incentivize businesses. That's why we had the Buy and Brick program. Uh, and then we had um, some complaints and some obvious uh, empty storefronts out there. Okay. And we also had some new businesses come into town that were constantly knocking down trees and building new, uh, which a lot of businesses like to do because that's their model. But I wanted to give a uh, incentive for businesses to fill our empty storefronts first. Uh, unfortunately, the planners of our town years and years and years ago decided to put a strip mall on every county road uh, in our town and plus our state highways. So we have strip malls all over the place in Brick, and a lot of them unfortunately were empty. So the, the storefront revitalization program, um, governments can't control – a lot of people think that we can control people from knocking down trees, but it's private property. They're allowed to do that. Uh, but what we can control is fees and costs. So my idea was to uh, waive all government fees, uh, town fees, all inspection fees, permit fees for any uh, store that was willing to take a storefront that was empty for more than a year um, that was less than uh, 10,000 square feet so that um, we could fill a lot of these empty storefronts. And we tried to start it last summer, uh, but unfortunately the state DCA stepped in <laughs> and they um, – had never heard of such a program. I was a little. It was the first time I was done in New Jersey, so they took about three months to review it, and then they finally gave their approval. So we started it off in uh, October of last year. And has anybody taken you up on the offer yet? Uh, there has been. There has been uh, a, doc, a few doctors' offices and some smaller shops that have uh, taken advantage of. So it. what's the what is the what is the typical savings for a small business owner looking to you know what what are they saving in fees by by partaking in that program? Uh, it's, it's usually a couple thousand dollars, uh, okay. depending on the type of business. And and if it has to switch over from one type of business to the next, there's obviously there's more savings because you have less you have more inspections in those uh, opportunities. If you were going from a barbershop to a barbershop, uh, there, it would only save a couple hundred dollars uh, because it's not really that much of a change. But uh, if you're going from a barbershop to a um, even a nail salon or, or to a um, an insurance office or something like that, there's a lot more uh, tenant fit up and things like that. So the fees uh, could, get, uh, could get out stand, or get, get to be a large amount, and it was a way to uh, have, have these empty storefronts filled. Okay. Well, that's great. Listen, I think, again, any incentive that you can have to uh, – uh, for someone to uh, to bring their business to town uh, and to fill uh, to fill some some spots that are uh, that have been eyesores for a while, I think there's uh, that. Listen, we're all for that. Um, all right, so as we're moving through here, talking about business, the one that's in the news. In fact, uh, it 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 was uh, it's actually the lead of uh, of our local news broadcast here on the on the station today is around Wegmans and around your campaign to bring Wegmans to Brick. So talk to us about that. Yes, I had reached out to Wegmans right after I became mayor, um, just based on residents just saying they really wanted to have a, a Wegmans in town. Uh, there was no area that was large enough. I thought maybe the our old our old food town property on Route 70, but it wasn't enough acreage for them. Um, I did see some smaller ones up in Boston when I went up there to visit my niece. Contacted them again. They said they were only doing those in uh, towns you know, like cities such as right. Boston and Chicago. Um, so we were kind of at a lost cause there, and then. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Pathmark went out of business nationally, and um, so we have a larger spot in town at the Laurel Square Shopping Center between Route 70 and Route 88, two major state highways, uh, which would be perfect for a Wegmans. And uh, Wegmans uh, had, had, uh, had, they had reached out, and they said uh, they don't think there was enough interest in brick for a Wegmans. And so I'm trying to change that perception because it's definitely not true no matter where I go. Senior villages, right. uh, Little League fields, people want a Wegmans. And so I started the uh, campaign to contact Wegmans by, by uh, Twitter or Facebook or their email or their website. And then if it's used in social media, to use a hashtag of uh, Brick Township wants a Wegmans. And it's been successful <laughs> so far. <laughs> and so are you offering any kind of uh, – have you looked into offering any kind of incentives to bring them? Or is it strictly like you're going to make a lot of money by putting a Wegmans here? Uh, it's we're, we're actually talking with the talking with the landlord uh, to see what type of incentives we can do together uh, in order to have the uh, Wegmans come. I've heard from people as far south as Barnegat saying that they would come up here to Brick if we were able to get sure. A Wegmans. Sure, sure. No, <laughs> listen. Uh, you know, it's uh, my we did. My wife did a family uh, shopping day uh, on Saturday. Uh, that was the family minus Jeremy, by the way. Uh, Wegmans and uh, and and they. I think they ate two two meals there. During their stay, so uh, we are we are big Wegmans fans in the Grunin household. So I'm I'm wishing you the best on that effort. Yep. Okay, when we come back after the break, time flies here with uh, Mayor Ducey. We are going to talk about some of the fun things happening for the summer in Bricktown, the Brick Proud campaign. So much to talk about, Mayor John Ducey, Bricktown. Back after this, wake up with Jeremy Grunin.
The news never stops at WOBMAM.com. Get the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Gronin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 at 1310. Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. And we're back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. I'm back here with Mayor John Ducey from Bricktown. I'm trying to defend the honor of Tom's River here in the breaks because, you know, he's killing me with all this uh, economic development stuff in Bricktown, which um, I'm a little bit jealous of. Uh, so I'm trying to I'm trying to hold it down for, for the good folks at Tom's River. But but it's really I, I feel like I kind of brought a pea shooter to a nuclear battle here. So anyway, uh, but moving right along. Uh, Mayor, why don't you talk to us about Summerfest? I know there's a, there's a, it's a it's a long time tradition. Uh, what do you guys have on tap for this summer? Yep, this summer we're just trying to make it more contemporary. Have uh, more families come. We're back up to uh, four concerts for the entire Summerfest series, as well as a car show and drive-in movies. Uh, we started off with our what we call our Fourth of July show, but it's on June 30th, which is because we always keep Summerfest on Thursdays. And we have a great band called Saved by the 90s, which is obviously all 90s songs, uh, followed by the next Thursday, July 7th, the Bronx Wanderers. So that's something with the uh, the doo-wop in the 50s and 60s. Uh, July 14th is the Amish Outlaws, and they play everything from the 50s and 60s all the way up until a song that just came out the week before, and they do a really great job. And then uh, July 21st is Rubik's Cube, which is a 1980s band, as the, as the title of the band with the right. show. And there's fireworks after every single show. We have a beer and wine garden uh, for every show, and there's a bunch of different food trucks and vendors, and uh, it's just really a great event. It brings out thousands and thousands of people, eight, 9,000 people event. And there's shuttles that bring people, and uh, there's parking on site. If you're not lucky enough to get a spot on site and get in there early enough to get your food and uh, drinks before the concert, then you do have a couple of options, Midstream School and Brick Township High School, to take shuttles. Cool. So uh, I'll be self-serving for a moment. I know Town Square Media is the official media partner uh, of Summerfest. Uh, and why why do you guys partner with Town Square? They are one of the most popular stations at the Jersey Shore, uh, largest radio presence here. And we want to get the crowds as big as uh, possible to our events and been able to reach the most people. And it's basically just looking forward to working with Town Square Media and it's the first time uh, we've worked with them in a number of years, at least over nine or ten years. Cool. And I assume Summerfest is open to everyone, not just brick residents, right? It's open to everybody. We invite yeah. everybody from surrounding towns. Come on down and yeah. uh, enjoy yourselves on a Thursday night in brick. Eat spend, at our restaurants. Spend some time <laughs> in brick, right? It's not just open to, uh, not just uh, yeah, not just about brick residents. Come on, where you come? all right, cool. All right, so so along the same lines, brick proud. Uh, hashtag brick proud. Everybody's driving their hashtag. We have uh, we have uh, we are tr. And uh, you have Brick Proud. So uh, so how is that going? Where did that come from, first of all? Uh, it started off, uh, there's a conference down in uh, Atlantic City called the League of Municipalities. I was a moderator for uh, a, a social media conference uh, or seminar at that conference. And uh, there was a speaker from Jersey City who talked about a social media campaign that they launched called Jersey City Make It Yours. And I just sat there and thought to myself, you know what? Um, there's, there seems to be a little bit of negative connotation about Brick Township sometimes, and I want everybody to know how great Brick Township is. So we started hashtag Brick Proud, asked everybody to take pictures or comment about your favorite store, or your favorite restaurant or a meal or our beaches, parks. Uh, we have so much going on uh, in, in Brick Township that we want everybody to know about it, and, we, and uh, our residents are definitely proud, and we want everybody on the outside to know that we're all proud to be Brick residents. Cool. Uh, and so obviously that's been received well, I would imagine? Yes, there's uh, a lot of businesses that actually advertise their businesses by putting hashtag Brick Proud. So when somebody searches hashtag Brick Proud, that their business shows up. Uh, in addition to that, you see th- th- pictures of snowstorms and how uh, you know their kids built snowmen, did snow angels, or they're sledding down the hills. And uh, we're going to have some photo contests over the course of the year to really uh, promote it. Very cool. Uh, okay, so I usually I ask this every uh, with everyone that comes in here. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, it, I, I'm always interested to hear what folks uh, answer is. So 
what we do is we give everyone their magic wand, right? We give you the 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 pixie dust, the fairy dust. If you remember Bewitched, you could just kind of wiggle your nose and 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 make an impact on something. So if you didn't have to deal with your town council, which I'm sure you love and you love dealing with them and they're your bestest friends in the whole wide world. Um, and if you didn't have to deal with the rest of the political machine or, or voters or anything, what's the one thing that you would do if you could just uh, wave your magic wand? Wave the magic wand and get everybody back in their houses uh, who are out of their houses uh, because of Sandy. Right. Well, that is uh, that is a great answer. And so I, I'm sure that you uh, you still have a number of folks that are impacted. Uh, so you're saying FEMA hasn't been que- nearly as quick as we would have liked them to be? No, the whole the whole process. Uh, there's there's only about thirty four percent of the people who who uh, are supposed to receive RREM money, which is to, the right. one hundred fifty thousand dollar grant to elevate your home. There's only about thirty four percent of the people um, that are back in their homes uh, as a result of not not getting that funding quick enough, or having problems getting contractors, or even worse, having contractors walk away with their money. Um, so, getting all those people back into their homes would be a very important thing. And and what do you know? What what percentage of the tax base did Brick lose um, from the storm? Uh, we lost over eight hundred million worth of rateables, and we still to this day we have three hundred fifty seven million of rateables off the book still. So we're coming back, not coming back as quick as everybody has predicted, and uh, that does have an impact on our on our taxes, unfortunately. Sure does. So, Mayor, where would folks go to learn more about what's happening in Bricktown? Uh, what's on the uh, What's on the agenda? Uh, where would they go if they want to just uh, find out what to do uh, in your great town? We have an awesome Facebook site. We have over 18,000 likes. Uh, you can follow me, at Mayor Ducey, on Twitter, our township, at Township of Brick on Twitter. Uh, and uh, our website is very informative. And we actually do a buy uh, twice a year newsletter that gets mailed to every single household in Brick Township. And uh, we also... Uh, we have Brick 20, uh, B20, which is a TV station. Wow. Look at that. You could follow Mayor Ducey on Twitter, at Mayor Ducey. That's fa- what a world we've come to. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, uh, Mayor, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Can we, can we make sure we get you back here in the not-too-distant future? As soon as you're ready to uh, announce that Wegmans is coming to town, uh, will you come in and talk to us about it? Yep, I'll come in anytime talk to you about any issue. Awesome. That is great. <laughs> Mayor John Ducey doing a great job in Bricktown, driving economic development, a man after my own heart. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Back on Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin after this.